number 14 from the 2009 advanced tyre. At last, the partial fractions question. Normally expect that a lot earlier, and you also expect it as whether there be integration to follow. Slight twist this time. Express that in partial fractions, and hence or otherwise, obviously it'll be the hence. Find the first three non-zero terms in the Maclaurin expansion of this. Now obviously you're going to be putting that into partial fractions because it'll be easier to go through the derivatives of those because there's hopefully be two nice little bits or several nice little bits as opposed to differentiating this big cumbersome lumbering object here. Right, so the first bit, partial fractions. Well, in that case I'm just going to say this. Let that be represented by, now notice there's going to be three terms here because I've got a repeated factor in the denominator, denominator. so I'll let it be a over the x plus 2, b over the x plus 2 squared, and then c over the little lonely x minus 4. Then multiply through it. Now this is meant to be an identity. These two sides are identical. That's how you're going to find a, b and c, by equating these coefficients either directly or by numerical substitutions. So what have we got? That means that I've got this arrangement multiplying it out. I'll have a being multiplied by x plus 2 and x minus 4, because I'm multiplying everything throughout, plus b only requires the x minus 4, and c requires the x plus 2 squared, would give me, now that that's gone, x squared plus 6x minus 4. Then, whichever way you like either by equating coefficients or by numerical substitutions. Numerical substitutions are an obvious choice when you've got these little discrete linear factors. So I'll just say this. Let x equal, which one first of all? 4. If x equals 4, then what have I got? If x equals 4, that goes, that goes, and I'm left with 6 here. So I've got 36. I've got 36c will be this thing. Will be 16 plus 24 minus 4 which is 36, which means c equals 1. Now another obvious knockout would be negative 2. Let x equal negative 2. Well, if x is negative 2, that goes, that goes, but I'm left with this one. So I've got b times, now negative 2 and negative 4 makes negative 6. And on this side, if x is negative 2, I've got a 4, but minus a 12, minus a 4. So that's negative 12 which means that b must be divided by negative 6, b is 2. Now since there's no more knockout values, and I'm not want to be doing any more valuations, I'll just revert to the formal mathematical method for equivalent statements, which is, if these two expressions are meant to be the same, their corresponding terms must be the same, so their corresponding co coefficients must be the same. So I'll take the x squared term, for instance. So consider the x squared term. On the x, for the x squared term, I've got this. I've got an A, none there, and a C. And the A and the C must make 1. Now, I already know that A, I already know that C is 1. That means that A must equal 0. So it was handier doing this because I've only got two parts to it then. So that means the expression here turns into just, A was gone, so it turns into just 2 over x plus 2 squared plus 1 over x minus 4. There. Then the second part, the first three non-zero terms of the Maclaurin's expansion. So that means I'm going to have to differentiate this several times. So obviously it's going to be easier to differentiate that several times because effectively you've only got one term there. So they're just functions of a little linear expression. So, Maclaurin's expansion. Now, the Maclaurin's expansion means I want to have this. I want to express this in the form of the sum from n to infinity of terms that look like this. f to the n0, meaning the nth derivatives, where the zeroth one means the original one, times x to the n over n factorial. So, I've got the first one already. I've just got to do at least two more differentiations so long as none of these derivatives equate to 0 when x is 0. So I'll start off with the first one. So what's my first expression? I've got this. So I've got f0 of x, if you like, is 2 over x plus 2 squared plus 1 over x minus 4. Now, what's that at 0? Well, I've got 2 over nothing plus 2 is 2, that's 4, plus 
1 over negative 4. So that's 2 quarters minus 1 quarter, which is 1 quarter. So at least I've got that term. Next one, I want the first derivative now. Well, you could either put that back into the form of negative 2, or you could just think of it as, remember that means power negative 2, and if you like, that's power negative 1 there. So it's multiply by the power, take 1 off the power. Multiply by the power, so it'll be negative 4. Take 1 off the power, so it'll drop down to a 3 then. And of course the inner derivative is just 1, so that's not going to affect it. Same here. Multiply by the power, so it'll be, t it'll be multiplied by negative 1. Take 1 off the power, so it'll drop down to 2 then. What's the value of the derivative of that derivative at 0? Well, I've got negative 4 over, this time it's going to be 2 cubed, which is 8, minus 1 over, and that's going to be negative 4 squared, which is 16. So I've got negative 4 eighths, that's negative 8, that's negative 9 sixteenths. That's fine. It's all in target for just having to do a couple of differentiations. Now I need one more term. So let's hope that this doesn't give us zero as an answer. So what's the second derivative? Same again. That's a negative 3, that power, so that's going to go to 12. The power will drop by 1, so it's down to 4. That's a negative 2. Multiplying by that, we'll make that a 2. Then the power will drop by 1, so that goes to 3. So what's the value of that derivative at 0? Well, it's a bit more in the way of numbers now. I've now got 12 over 2 to the 4, which is 16, plus 2 over negative 4, cubed, which is again negative. Unfortunately, it's going to be negative 64. So that means I'm going to have some 64ths at least. I know I could have cancelled them down, but I think I'll just leave it as 64 just now, because that's four of them. So that's going to be 48, 46 over them, and that's going to drop down to 23 upon 32. So all was fine. I had the whole lot. We are able just to do the first two differentiations. Now we can get the Mercolon's expansion of it. That means that that expression equals, just feed it in now, so it's going to be starting at n equals 0, so it's going to be this one, so that's 1 quarter times x to the 0, I'll just put it in formula just now, over 0 factorial, plus the next one, negative 9 upon 16 times x to the 1 over 1 factorial, plus 23 upon 32 times x to the 2 over 2 factorial. Now it's just a case to tidy that up. Well, x to the 0 is just 1, so that first term is just a quarter. 1 factorial is just 1, and that's x, so that's just minus 9 sixteenths of x. Plus, then for this one, now 2 factorial is just 2 times 1 is 2, so that's going to double that denominator. We'll make that 23 over 64 x squared. I'll just put plus, even though it would probably be negative next, dot, dot, dot. But it's only the first three that I was interested in, so there's the first three. That wasn't too bad.